Hello and welcome to the 2023 Science Olympiad season. This video is for Bridge Division B. Um, it's mostly meant for the state and national competitors as it's right around the corner. And for the uh, future competitors and when Bridge comes rotating around again. So this video is heavily based off of BASA Engineers 5900 score video which will be linked in the description. The design and everything I'm talking about will mostly be based towards that with some certain modifications. And for this video's purpose, um, I will only be talking about um, my design. So just a helpful tip. And finally, to end off the introduction, um, this video will be split into um, five different parts. So the first part will be talking about um, what you need to know about this event to succeed. The second part, which we'll be talking about some um, demonstrations and some designs. The third part, we'll be talking about some uh, material selection tips, um, organizing, uh, categorizing um, balsa wood. The fourth part, which is um, the three jig part. So this part will be talking about how to use these 3D jigs. Um, I'll put the file in the description. And if you have a 3D printer, that's amazing since you can print that. And the last part, the fifth part, will be all about loading your bridge during competitions. So let's get straight into it. Part one, getting to know this event and how to succeed. So getting to know any event is the most basic part. Um, reading all the rules, all the requirements, all the criteria, all super important. And what's equally as important is having the right tools. So for bridge, um, you'll need a balsa stripper, something to cut, um, individual slices of wood or individual planks and CA glue, um, preferably Instacure. Um, and what I mean by CA is just super glue that cures really fast um, because you want your wood to instantly just, uh, you want it to stick there, uh, there and you don't want to have it just um, fall apart after uh, putting it on. The fourth thing is you need a scale um, fifth, you need something to test with. Um, sixth, you obviously need wood. And seventh, um, you need to be in the right place, um, have motivation. So I'll be explaining um, each of these tools more uh, thoroughly. So balsa stripper um, is a tool that can cut bigger planks of wood into uh, smaller strips, which then goes into something to cut with. Um, I usually just use a one-sided blade, and then you can cut that cut out um, thin strip with this blade and cut into shapes or just anything you need. So um, here you can see that the joints of these um, cross bracings are not perfectly square and some are um, more tilted than others. So like some have a clear end joint, um, some others have more parallel joints. So what I'm saying is that not all of your, mm, not all of your pieces will be the same exact shape. The third thing will be, um, something to test with. So what I mean by something to test with is just something that can like help you find out how much your bridge can really weigh. Um, it can be as simple as putting um, two tables, two chairs that are equally leveled and manually loading the 
um, bridge yourself. Or like mine, since I don't have a sand loader, I can just uh, use this, which when I turn it, um, the reader goes down and it can stop at certain points and I can turn it on and off with different units. Um, or to use the traditional testing base, which is the sand loader. Sand comes down and um, it doesn't stop until all the sand is out or all the uh, or if your bridge breaks the fourth thing is um, a scale a scale is important because if you don't know what um your bridge weighs um five uh five grams two grams whatever um you won't be able to keep track of it and you won't be able to find out um if it can really hold or not and say oh, with this knowledge, I can build another bridge that's slightly heavier, lighter, and etc. The fourth thing is, um, sorry, the, another thing is glue. So glue, preferably use super glue or CA glue, Instacure. Instacure is really fast bonding glue that can join the, uh, each balsa strip with another balsa strip really fast takes about um, like five to 10 seconds to bond and two hours to fully cure. And that two hours is just for the bridge to sit there by itself. You also need um, to be in the right place. So having an environment that's clear um, is really important because you don't want your supplies to be all over the place and having the right heart so, um, in mind. So having motivation to build this bridge. If you just um, half-heartedly build a bridge, that bridge um, won't be the best. And finally, wood. And this will be talked about in material selection later, but having wood to cut out and use is super important. And more details will be discussed later. So that's basically pretty much it for part one. Uh, make sure you have everything um, understand how your bridge works. So like the cross bracings, for example, um, serve as um, joinders that um, stop your legs from um, warping left, right. Um, and actually what I mean by warping is just like dislocated. So if my two legs are supposed to be parallel to each other, um, this isn't, but just a demonstration. They're supposed to be parallel. Um, when warped or distorted, um, that means they'll change shape or become unparalleled. So that's just one thing to know. Um, understand um, how your bridge works. And the right rules. Um, follow the right rules too. Because if you don't have the right rules, um, and if you're following just a random ma manual script, uh, when it comes time to test, um, your bridge will most likely be placed in tier two because the measurements aren't according to the criteria given. So keep all of this in mind. Um, it's a lot, but it becomes really easy after you've built many bridges or um, if you have more experience. So that wraps up part one, and now let's get right into part two. Part two, designs and modifications. So for this part, it will mostly be talking about different measurements and measurements of my bridge and some certain modifications I made to Balsa Engineer's design. So for this part, um, you want a design log. So here I have my design log from this year. So this design log um, includes different things, um, different measurements, um, build phases, and what I did for certain um, invitationals. 
So, mm, let's see. So, for example, um, this is my Bird SO satellite. Um, some of you may have competed in that competition. But this is my Bird SO satellite um, um, design log. And this design log, basically, um, it has um, my bridge name. And in this case, it's bridge 3.0. I have a design phase, choice of materials, load and expected weak points, um, materials used, major steps and lengths. So basically, um, all you would find in just any traditional, um, any traditional design log. And um, I've added a sketch here, um, a one-to-one -one sketch of my bridge too. This is important because um, you can actually compare each of your bridges and see, oh, I've changed my design so much and look how helpful this is. Or, oh, this design was better, so I should probably go back to using this design. And, and you would also want some observation recommendations and improvements. These three parts, I've also added to my design log. Um, most of this comes from the actual testing. So I would um, ask the supervisor or the proctor of the event if they can give feedback. In most cases, they usually can after the competition. And observations, this is up to your, uh, you or your partner to look at. Um, it's basically looking for um, if your bridge uh, broke in this part, that part, um, if some creaking happened um, at this part um, or early on. And you would obviously want how much you hold, uh, held and the score you won. So in this case, um, I held 15 kilograms and I got a score of 4,750. And um, congratulations, um, um, you can keep track of this score. And hopefully when the award ceremony comes out, um, you know what place you did. So yeah, I got second place, which is pretty nice. So now on to designs. So um, design, the design of a bridge is, I would say around 30, well, actually more than that, around 40 to 50% of all the actual bridge so um, here I have a bridge. The span of this bridge, so from end to end, um, is 37.5. The reason why is I want a clear base for both of my legs. So these legs are one centimeter wide and on both sides. So one centimeter on both sides means that two centimeters should be added to the extra clear span. And I would also have to keep in mind that the 0.5 centimeter can come from um, the angle that this bridge is in because um, the legs aren't perfectly parallel and that can cause some extra length. And um, another thing I would like to talk about is these cross bracings. So my cross bracings are approximately one thirty second of an inch, a bit less than that. Um, it's about one point two millimeters. These really don't matter because um, no matter how light these are, well, to a certain degree, obviously you can't just use like paper thin, but to a certain degree, the lighter these are, um, doesn't really matter because. Um, this bridge will still um, sway and the point of this is just to hold it in place so it doesn't sway and the lighter this is the more weight you can take off and these tension cords super super important um, I spent the most time um, talking uh, and just testing these tension cords so here I have two balsa strips. 
And the reason why you would say, oh, why would I have just two basket strips? Why not just use one base uh, a basswood strip? The reason why is um, these two basswood strips, um, the wider side, so the side that covers more surface area, is glued onto the leg of the bridge. So the more surface area that it's covering, um, the the more like how, the more it holds the bridge uh, from sliding apart. And having two of these means double the surface area compared to one uh, uh, bass strip. And having two can also kind of share the weight between both of them. And yeah, that's actually something I really put a lot of work into. And I'm telling you guys because this is actually much lighter um, than just using one strip of uh, basswood, a uh, basswood. Um, actually, I don't know really how to pronounce it, but um, yeah, this is about 0 0.1, um, 0 0.15 per strip. So it totals around um, 0.45-ish. So yeah, and that basically wraps up part two, designs and modifications. You can always go back and add more trusses, um, make your legs stronger. It's kind of like a double-edged sword. The stronger your legs are, the more truss uh, bracings you can take off. But that also means that it's kind of weaker but the more um, trusses you have um, means that the more weight you have. So it really depends on what you're going for and what you're aiming for. But that's just some couple tips and something that I really want to show you guys. So yeah, let's get right into part three. Part three, material selection. Welcome to my categorizing nightmare. So for this part, as you can see, I have a lot of wood spread out on this table and in this box. So all of this wood is cut out from a multitude of different uh, planks of wood, yeah, boards of wood. Um, so here is an example I showed from earlier. Um, so this plank of wood, I can cut this into about mm, about 15 to 20-ish uh, leg pieces. So after cutting this out, um, I would categorize them. I would weigh them using my scale. Um, using my scale. And then I would weigh them. So weighing them, um, the 0 0.6s. Um, go with the 0.61s and um, I categorize them by tenths places. So the 0 tenths place, similar tenth places go into one group. So as you can see, um, this group, um, it's the um, tenth place of eight. Um, this is five, seven. And the reason why I do this is um, just cutting out four just random um, legs, um, chances are that all of them are going to be just um, separate, really far away from each other. One might be 0 0.56 grams, another might be 0 0.78 grams, and all of this is um, really different, and that's bad because um, one thing in bridge, you want to keep your bridge as e equal as possible on both sides. So basically um, have an imaginary line of symmetry that separates shape, um, weight, and just all of, um, all of the things that are important to bridge. So having four equal or closest length bridges, uh, legs um, can actually help because um, if the weight goes down, one leg will for sure break 
uh, before the other three if it's the lightest. And the heavier ones will obviously stay. But there's no point in just having all three legs um, keep stable if one leg breaks. Because if one leg breaks, all the other three just topple over. So when selecting your grain preferences, um, that's also important too. So A grain, B grain, and C grain. Those are the three main types of grains. So going over their purposes. A grain is great for having something get pulled apart like this um, both ways. Um, this grain is uh, really strong in this area. Um, B grain is similar to this. Um, and you can actually differentiate A and B because um, A grains um, streaks and fibers are hors very horizontal, uh, just almost straight. And B's are slightly um, curved to the side. And um, there's a lot more wavy patterns. Um, this is kind of a mix of a and C. Um, I wouldn't recommend using this since it's really mediocre. And C. Um, C grain is great at compression. So um, if I were to have something loaded on this, this would sustain more than the A grain because the um, structure of the fibers are kind of checkerboarded. It's kind of like a Lego. It's um, bad when you try and um, pull it apart because Legos are connected from the bottoms. But if you press on it, the Legos will uh, stay tight. So I use A grain for the um, tension members and the cross bracings. Since cross bracing, uh, kind of the purpose is like the job of them is to keep it uh, from distorting and um, to do that, uh, they're pulled apart like this. And I use C grain for the legs since when pressing it, um, you want the legs to stay tight. So that's basically categorizing. Um, always be sure to weigh each one. It can be really tedious to cut an entire board sometimes, but trust me, it's worth it. And Always cut your legs just a bit longer, like 0 0.5 centimeter, uh, centimeters longer than the expected length because you want to sand it and keep like had, uh, adding finer details at the very end. So having a perfect um, edge, um, perfect length um, can be disastrous because um, at the end, you might have some details you still want to catch up on, but can't because your leg is already too short. So that wraps up mm, material selection. And hopefully this doesn't find it, uh, find you too hard or um, um, just like difficult to understand. So if you have any questions, um, you can always ask in the comments below. So that, um, that's it for part three. Let's get right into part four, which is my favorite part, um, 3D jigs. Part four, 3D jig action. So for this part, you'll need a 3D printer to print out these two jigs, which I will link the files down in the description. Um, all the properties and measurements are there. And um, hopefully a 3D printer is accessible to you um, somewhere nearby. I know some libraries have it and maybe a staples near you. So first, um, the purpose of these jigs um, 
I'll explain one by one. So this first one, when I first started bridge, um, I wasn't really good at building bridges, obviously, since this is my first year, only one experience, uh, one year of experience. So this 3D jig was made um, after um, multiple failure attempts, since um, building a bridge with like this design, which is a ladder type truss bridge, um, like leaning inwards um, is actually quite hard to make by hand and especially the measurements and having something like s parallel like this is much easier uh, because you don't have to like tilt it um, whatever degrees and it was really hard to find that out and that's when I realized oh 3D jigs exist and um, these jigs also exist in tower and um, and I know some jigs have helped the past two. So basically, um, let me explain how it works. So you would have two legs, these are two scrap legs, cut out according to the shape of this bridge, uh, this um, jig. So you'd see this side, this side is what I would cut um, these, this piece according to. So putting two on, you can see it's kind of aligned. Um, and then you would have someone hold it or a partner, but I don't have anyone here right now. So I'll just do it by hand. It won't be the best. You want to line it up with the bottom, line it up with the top. And then you want it to be flat. And then have one of these small white stabilizers and put it right in, squeeze it on. And then you would press up, make sure there's no space at the bottom. And the white piece too, which will stabilize the upper part. So this way, um, your legs are both stabilized and ready to go. So after this, I would glue something up here. So here's another scrap piece. Uh, something up here and something down here just to stabilize it. I would do it uh, one centimeter up usually, one centimeter down from the top and do it on both sides. Glue the tension cords and then after doing that, here's where the second jig comes into play. So after um, gluing on both sides, connecting these two legs, and the tension cords, I would first just take this, have a wide piece of sandpaper down here, and then I would just rub it back in forth like this to sand out the bottom first. Since um, this base acts like a covering to stop it from sanding even further. So just uh, back and forth until it was smooth. And then for the top part, um, I would take this and this, um, these four corners, um, here's the shape. So these um, top part, these corners are for your hands to uh, press and stabilize them. So you would obviously have a partner there. And then you can see there's like this opening. Um, so this opening is for the top to sand it smoothly. So um, I don't have, um, sandpaper right now but for example um i would just have something um like a sandpaper glue to a sponge or anything um a rectangular type shape then i would just sand up here until it's perfectly flat and smooth because this base will stop it from sanding even further and this top will be perfectly smooth because um sanding it by hand um sometimes it will end up um um, kind of round on um, the side should be really fine and sharp if it ends up kind of round that means it was um, not good and it was sanded unevenly so that wraps up um, this 3D model uh, this 3D part it's kind of hard to understand at first but with these um, with this demonstration, it should be pretty easy. 
um, I'm sharing just all the experience I personally have throughout the season. And I'll also show you some of the past uh, 3D models. So I this this isn't just the first model I printed. There's a many models, many, many. So here are just two to show off. So this one's a bit wider. This one's like, um, I don't even know what I was thinking at that point because these are actually just quite wide and yeah, um, much different than this black one. So after narrowing down and keep on, uh, and I kept on um, just minimalizing all the measurements since in bridge, the uh, design kind of uh, really matters. So the smaller it is, the more uh, minimal, de uh, the minimal like um, area of the bridge, the better because um, smaller something equals less weight. So yeah, that pretty much wraps it up. Um, lots, I have lots of experience from this. So feel free to reach out in the comments if you have like just any certain questions and I'm sure um, someone else would um, probably also need to read that for better clarification. So always just go in the comments, um, read some certain things and certain comments. And if you're still confused, um, you can also write one yourself. So that wraps it up for part four. Part five, welcome to the last part. This part will be all about loading your bridge during a competition. So for bridge, um, they give you six minutes for division B to load your bridge. So after um, testing uh, you on some questions, um, looking at your design log and explaining how the apparatus works, um, the proctor will start the six minute timer and have you set it up. So it's kind of, it's really different for all the invitational, um, every regionals I've been to. So um, some, some competitions, they have the loading block glued to the apparatus or taped there. Um, that's really good because uh, you can actually save some time and um, putting on the support block um, can actually take like around 5-10 seconds, which is precious time that can go into testing your bridge. And after setting up the support block, you would most likely uh, put the bridge on, have your partner put the bridge on, and here's where the two paths come in. So either um, you have your bridge on, your partner is stabilizing it while you put um, the support block, uh, sorry, the loading block on top uh, that has a chain that can perfectly fit through or your, uh, the top of your bridge, like the opening, it's too small. So that means um, you'll have to unscrew it and you have to take the chain, put it through the top and unscrew uh, it back. Here's where the difficult part comes in. Screwing it back, it can easily topple your bridge. And um, screwing um, the screw takes around one minute. And this is a lot of time, especially because you still have to put on the bucket and let the sand come out. Because some apparatuses they don't let you control the sand. This means that um, no matter how long uh, you take uh, for this to set it up, the sand will flow at the same rate. Three minutes to flow to, uh, for all the sand to come out, five minutes. Um, same for each apparatus. Um, you're, if you're lucky, um, the competition actually um, lets you control the sand yourself. So if you run out of time, just 
pull the lever all the way back and let all the sand come out. So after unscrewing it, putting it back on, um, um, you want to line up the chain. So this stick of wood will be uh, the chain example. Um, I'll be breaking it half. So this chain, basically, you want it to be in the precise middle, the very, very middle. So once it's in the middle, actually one tip I would suggest is to mark your bridge with a black dot, um, with a black dot right in the middle. I would draw it on both sides. So here it's on both sides. And draw this black dot on, uh, after drawing it on, this will help you during the competition to line up your chain. So no matter if the loading block is um, to the side, uh, rotated uh, how many degrees, doesn't matter. As long as the chain is in the middle, because the weight isn't coming from the uh, loading block itself. It's coming from the bucket, which is centered through the chain. And the chains, basically the chain is the pinpoint for all the weights. So if your chain's to the uh, left or the right, um, that one side will break and your bridge will become uneven. And all that hard work, all that progress will lead you just, just your bridge will break. And you'll be left feeling really disappointed. So always be sure to do that. Um, always have the chain be in the direct middle. And another thing is you don't want it to be too in front, uh, too in front or too behind. Um, you just want it in the middle as best as you can. Just to kind of glance at it. If it's in the middle, you're good to go. And then you would have the S hook. Um, you would have an S hook attached to the chain. Um, and then you would put your bucket on. And after putting the bucket on, um, your partner um, should be the one um, holding the two sticks that will stabilize the bucket. Uh, be cautious because um, if you're a shaky person, um, you may shake the bucket just ever so slightly. That matters and this bridge could just collapse because of that uh, tiny just shake. So always have the most calm person do it. If both of you aren't calm, um, and then just hopefully take a deep breath in, just stabilize it and you're good to go. And always just use the white part and you'll get disqualified or get a tier two if um, any of the, any part of the stick touches the bucket besides the white uh, tip. So you're good to go. Pull the sand down um, if it's controlled um, do it slowly at first and then let it go faster at the end. So the reason is the slower you go at the beginning, um, because if you have a sudden weight at the beginning, uh, the bridge will most likely kind of like break. If you ease it into it and start putting more weight, that's better for the bridge. So um, say you held all 15 kilograms, you got the five kilogram bonus. Um, awesome job, your bridge made it. And just wait until the award ceremony and um, that's your time to shine if your bridge is light enough. So um, I wish you luck um, if you're in a competition and have fun. That's it for the video. Um, unfortunately, this year I couldn't make it into um, the state team, um, even though my school qualified for some reason. Um, I don't know why, but um, if I made it into the state team with more time, with all my experience, I can probably make an even lighter bridge. Since right now my lightest bridge is 3.61 grams 
and it has held three 15 kilogram loads um, throughout um, uh, a lot of tests and has helped me win my final regional competition uh, with a score of 5,500 plus. So with more time and if I made it into state, I can probably make a bridge that's lighter than 3.3 grams. Um, with some ambition and motivation, um, anything can be achieved. So good luck to everyone uh, competing in state and nationals. Hopefully you do well in all of your events and in bridge. Have fun. Goodbye.